Hello, anyone and everyone. I'm Echo, and today we're exploring Amnesia, the Dark Descent. We're here in the back hall, again, where we have to go into the guest room. No, not that one. The study, I believe, because... Oh, right here. Because, in case of Missing Rod, uh, there's an extra one in the study rooms, and we need three of those rods. So, unfortunately, that means we have to go to yet another place, where there's probably going to be a bunch of monsters and crap. So, yay! He returned the teacup to the saucer and picked up the orb as one would an apple and pondered on the strange happenings. Yeah, okay. I think we've already read that one. Unless I'm mistaken. I'm probably mistaken. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if they, uh, started repeating them after some time. So... We're down to head is pounding and hands are shaking. We're one step away from just being at ellipsis. And, uh, I actually... Because I'm frankly way too, like, fed up, so to speak, with, uh... With the insanity system here and how it works. I actually looked up just some vague clues about it. And it seems that the sanity doesn't actually affect us until we're down to the one where it's ellipsis, which is just the three dots. Only then does it really affect us because uh, our character can apparently pass out uh, randomly when we're in that state. And obviously if we pass out, we become immobile, and that means enemies can chomp on our butt and stuff, as they like to do. Oh, actually, yeah, I should close that. I should remember that uh, closing doors is pretty much a necessity. Because if a monster decides to spawn, well, putting a, uh, a closed door between me and said monster is the best way to make sure that I don't accidentally see them or that they see me. Because if either of those happens, it's a bad thing. If I see the monster, I lose sanity. If the monster sees me, it knows where I am and it'll come try and kill me. So, yeah. Just gonna leave that closed for a little bit. And basically leave all of them closed as I move through them. Okay. Alright, let's just peek down, see what's at the end of this hall here. Doesn't look like much. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh, there's just a bit of darkness right there. Really? We're not close enough to this light? Huh. Like, right here, it's just dark enough. That's weird. Um, also, unless I'm mistaken, uh, standing in d the darkness just for a short few seconds doesn't actually affect our sanity. Uh, unless I'm mistaken. I believe we have to actually stand in darkness for a little while before the sanity loss kicks in. Oh, nice little view outside the castle. I guess that's the guest room over there. It must be because of the, uh, the layout of the castle. The door to the left led to the guest room. So is the guest room just actually a single room? If that's the case, I think it'd be worth going over there to see if we can find anything. Oh, is that a note? Hey, note! Letter regarding the discovery of an orb. To my most trusted student and friend, Johan Weyer. The most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs I've been looking for the last 20 odd years. It is as inexplicable as the Heliodromus described in the Hortus Conclusus. Whoa, Latin. It was as it was told about, an underground Mithraic temple crowned with the unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hands and the texture was smooth and jagged, its color washed while rich. Contrast is not enough to describe its texture. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Alstad, investigating one of the an antiquated trails when I finally found the cavern. I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. 
As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of, discovery of my life, but has also become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out of the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bayed loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but unfortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echo through the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief thinking, it would be, thinking I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings. The trees had turned charcoal black with leaves of cinder, the ground covered in murky water. I passed on through the drenched land as the glowing ember gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. I could hear pleading screams in the distance, and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground, grasping, gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away across the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The Guardian had taken the orb from me, but still until this day I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearly a decade since that day, and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest in ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Alstad. Your friend and mentor, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. Okay. Now, uh, oh, well, let me check these diaries here. Algeria, return. Um... Professor Herbert. Is that the... I already forget the name of the guy we just read. Okay, he went... Um, yeah, Professor Herbert insisted he return to England, and then they talked about it, about what happened in Africa. Alright, so notes... Regarding the discovery of an orb. I know Cornelius Agrippa. No, okay, never mind, not the same person. I thought that might have been the guy that... Uh, that Daniel came back to visit in London when he had the orb and he showed it to him, but I guess not. Okay. Alright, anything else in this room? Doesn't look like it. Oh well, well, the view outside was nice, I suppose. Kinda dark and foggy, can't see much, but eh. Alright. Quite glad that nothing's jumped out us at us yet. Oh, hey, some oil. Just sitting there for the taking. Thanks, game. Ah, uh, seriously? <laughs> Did that? A slight headache. Oh, hey, our sanity went up. So it does go up over time, I guess. Probably just from standing in light. Oh, hey. That's a dead end if ever I've seen one. It's really dark over there, so... Ugh. Just... Just want to take a quick look. Make sure there's nothing over here. Okay. Alright. One more door. If there's monsters, it's going to be behind here. Oh, that's a shadow. I thought that was, like, green slime on the ground, but it's the outline of that, uh... Chandelier. Oh, there's another room past it, too. Damn. Okay. Alright. Just trying to be careful now. Oh. Let's see what you have to offer. sharpen the saw, but I can sense it. It's definitely there. Okay. So, yeah, that's a severed head. That's a little rabbit there, and it's a saw. So, it would seem this was one of two things. Either this is a place where he uh, 
would cut people open for some sort of experiments or whatever, and he seems to have disguised it as a taxidermy uh, place. The Canine Spine. Or this was a taxidermy place that he then sort of workshopped into a uh, Chambers of the Human Skull. Into a place where he would cut people open. Milestones of Human Anatomy. Understanding Locomotion. Or maybe it's neither, actually. Now that I'm reading these posters, maybe this was a place where he just cut open stuff. And he wasn't like... Like, maybe he was actually genuinely cutting open the animals, too, in order to, you know, study their anatomy. Yeah, that seems to be it. Because these animals, I just noticed, all, all these have cuts on them. The rabbit has a cut, like, from its mouth down to the side there. The dog was cut open a bunch. The bird has a cut down its stomach. So yeah, no, this is just a place where he was cutting open everything, including humans, apparently, in order to try and learn more about their, uh, uh, biology. Or, anatomy, I mean, not biology, whatever. Animal Experiment. Canis Lupus Familiaris, 1658, April 12th. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger and endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine exactly where and what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic uh, ge genesis. There's an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is bound to die from the exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that ultimately augments their experience of terror. Wait, so was he trying to study... fear? Through torture? Like, discover what causes fear? Jesus, dude. Okay. I've got my eye on you. And you too, to a lesser degree, because you don't have arms or a head. I don't trust statues. Not in pretty much any video game now. Seems every goddamn video game that comes out that has a, a place with either statues or mannequins, even games that aren't horror games, all of them seem to delight in giving you a little jump scare by having the statues move when you're not looking. Alright, Anatomy Frontiers. 1658, January 9th. Further disappointment. The antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain. Since no research has been made in my particular interest, I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly humans emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they prove less of a hassle to acquire. So, he was trying to study some type of special energy that he believed existed within life forms, and that the energy sort of exploded and got more powerful or whatever, or exuded itself more when, uh, when the subject was in fear. Okay, I guess. I don't know. Alright. Anything else to read here? Nope. What is this, though? Don't know. Don't have a clue. Alright. Search his drawers. Alright. Well, hey, tinder box. Hey, nothing. And let me guess, the rod's gonna be in here? Oh, no. Oh, great. His bounding hand is shaking. The portrait transformed to something else. That's that's great. That's just just close that there. Can we just 
stuff them back in. No, no, just... <sighs> Dang it. There. Need to keep the place clean and tidy, you know? Let's sit by the fire. Try to relax, because, uh... Yeah, Sanity does also make stuff like that happen. Where, uh... Our character hallucinates. I already figured that much out. Our vision goes blurry and stuff, and... And, uh... Pictures change. His face is now like that of a terrible alien or whatever. But, uh... Still, let's try to... Huh. I guess... I guess not much is... I don't know if it takes really long to happen, or if it just doesn't always happen, or what, but, alright, anything here? Nope, just a regular book. Okay, so we didn't find the other rod, the other rod was supposed to be in the study, though. Let me look at that again, real quick. Mementos, that doesn't say anything about it. Diaries, um, nope, 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 oh, damn it, not the right button. Notes, letter regarding the discovery of an, wait, no, shit. <laughs> Case of a missing rod. Full set of three rods is unavailable. There's one rod in the inner study rooms, which might work in case the elevator breaks down again. Unless it is absolutely necessary, always use the spare rods in the storage before using a mended one. Yeah. So we definitely need three. We couldn't combine the two rods that we have in our inventory. So we definitely do need three. This is... That's not a drawer, is it? No, that's just part of the desk. Okay, well, um, not in here, and I don't remember any other rooms. If we look closely at that, does it hurt our sanity? No? Okay, good. Freaking better not. What is that? It's probably a piece of an animal. Great. <laughs> okay, alright. Time to make our way out then, I guess. We seem to have covered every room. Take one more look around this room, just in case. Just in case. Thinking about it, it actually doesn't make much sense for a spare rod to be in this room in particular. But he said it was in the inner study. Wait a minute, what was that noise? Oh, okay. The chair dragging on the ground makes that noise. Got it. Okay. Thing over there? Nope. Alright. I'll, I'll fully admit I'm nervous because I'm expecting something to jump out any minute. I mean, I suppose this whole area doesn't necessarily have a lot of good places to hide. So, maybe the developers considered it a little uh, unfair to make a monster spawn in here, but it still wouldn't surprise me. Not at all. Maybe it's just in here. Maybe it's just in this room and I missed it. Oh, damn it. Turn on the light starting to get too dark. I mean, there's a lot of books and stuff in here. I suppose I... <laughs> Maybe it's in one of these! Nope. Doesn't seem to be. Hey, look at that. We got this across. There we go. Let's just put that in the... Oh, shit. I dropped it. Whoops. Never mind. Alright. Can't climb up there anymore. Oh, can't get down. Okay, good. Jeez. Um, already... We didn't close that, did we? I don't know. Maybe we did. Doesn't matter. I don't think the monsters are going around closing the chests we open. That wouldn't make much sense now, would it? Ooh, what's that? No, that's not it. It didn't roll under the thing, did it? No. If it did, we wouldn't have any way to get it, I don't think. So, uh, whoops. GG, game broke itself. Alright. One more look in here. 
Just because. Closing in. Yeah, yeah, you stop that, buddy. Stop talking to yourself. Oh, hey, but our sanity went back up. <laughs> it seems to have gone back up every time we've entered this room in particular. Unless I'm forgetting already. I know it happened, like, not even five minutes ago or something, but, uh... Feels like the last time we went in here was when our sanity went up. Not sure. Oh well. Alright. Uh, so... Unless I missed it, because I'm an idiot. And unless I, uh... Oh, he climbed out of bed and looked in out the window. It was completely dark. He waited, glanced at the old clock, and waited some more. Four o'clock, he thought. It's enough. Okay. Oh! Hold up. Something interesting I just noticed that I sort of thought about last time, but the body's gone, it seems. Yeah. The body that was... There was a dead body hanging right here. Um, it's gone. So that must be another hallucination caused by our sanity. We, uh, when we were in here last time, we had... It was, uh, hands are... He heads pounding, hands are shaking. And the body was there. So the body must only appear when we're at the, uh, third level of sanity. And, uh, not before it. That's interesting. Kind of thought the body was real. Alright, anyway, so, uh, we got the guest rooms here. Uh, hopefully should be small and, you know, not much space in there so that we don't have to run around a whole bunch. He tried to fit the pieces together, but like the sand dunes, they shifted when you weren't looking. Yeah, okay. Uh oh. My journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? I don't like the look of this at all. Oh, slight headache. Okay, but there's a cockroach. Just don't stare at the cockroach, I guess? Okay. I don't like the look of that door. Let's just block it. It's the only closed door in the whole freaking room. I can't assume anything good will come of it. Alright, one more chair. Why not? There you go. <laughs> I mean, they can't... They couldn't possibly spawn a monster in here where I could potentially see it spawn. So I have to assume if anything is going to come out at me, it's going to be from that room. Oh, wanted him. There you go. Okay. Nothing there. Note. 2nd of July, 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Yeah, I'd be worried for him too. If the whole group got attacked. Oil, sweet! the whole group got attacked and old Herbie is missing, then uh, I'd say that's pretty reasonable cause to be worried. Yup, yup, yup. Okay. Hey, drawers. Don't suppose there's anything in them. Oh, that won't lift up anymore because the... that thing's in the way. The candelabra. Oh, hey. Oh. That's, uh, it's more crucifixions than I remember hearing about. Hmm. Guess they, uh, guess they were low on time. They had to do the crucifixions party style. Okay. And that's just a bunch of people standing around. Okay, so what's in here? Anything at all. Extra rod? Oh, that looks like a crowbar. That's probably a puzzle item thingy. 
and a tinderbox. Alright. Let me just look all around here so I can... Oh, nothing in there? Nothing in there. Okay. And there? No. Okay. Oh, God. More skulls. Nope. Okay. But you know what? Let's leave that open because I'm pretty sure these are uh, spots you can hide in from when the monsters attack. Alright, anything there? Anything there? Nope. Okay. Jeez Louise. Not much of anything in this room except for the crowbar and the note, which are very important, and I will certainly take them in a moment. But first, uh, well, I was going to say, but first let's look around the whole room, but I've kind of covered the entire room, haven't I? Something is wrong. Oh, so wrong. Oh, so wrong. Yeah. Just kind of hearing voices or talking July, to himself. 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Ooh. That's cool. That's really cool, actually. The idea of somehow there being a second orb that he just missed and that Herbert went and found. That's freaking neato. Alright. Also, clearly somebody broke apart this box with the crowbar. Picked up crowbar. Anything to jump out and attack? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Stop it, cockroach. You're a jerk. Let me look at the crowbar real quick. A tool allowing great leverage. Okay. I'm guessing we have to... Yeah, we have to use it like we use every other object, it seems. Or every other... Tool, interactable item thing. Whatever. I don't know what to call them all. What do you expect of me? Oh! <laughs> okay. Guess what we use this on? Oh, and we have to actually... Do that, huh? The key. Please, let it be here. Okay. The key, let it please be here. Oh, shit. <laughs> you better find a place to hide. You have no means to defend yourself. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So they did spawn a monster in eventually. Just not when I expected. Well. I mean, there's nothing we can really do, so... I guess just wait here. I, li I do I have to say, I kind of like this, uh, this little situation. Oh, was that the sound of him leaving? I heard a door swinging, so I guess he left through the loading door. Or technically left through the loading door. Because I highly doubt he actually autonomously moves throughout the building or anything like that. Um... Yeah, just take a little peek. Okay. 
All right, I guess everything's gone. Um, but yeah, no, that's actually a really good section there. Because it's sort of like a tutorial to show you how to use the, uh... Oh, we didn't even lose any sanity. Screw you, Mr. Monster Man. It's sort of like a tutorial to show you how to use the, uh... Things. That's a switch. Oh, and that's not a switch. That's a coat hanger. Herp derp. Yeah, it's like a it's like a tutorial, but not a literal tutorial, because it's uh, you know it doesn't like straight up say, oh you have to hide in the closets to hide from enemies. No, it's just it's just you know you better hide, and then there's just an open closet there. So let's the player figure out what to do using their own brain muscle. Okay. Wait, did I? Okay, just get rid of that then. Anything in there? Oh. That's odd. There's no more, uh... I was expecting to see the other, the third, uh... Rod in here. Guess not. Okay, let's read the note. 4th of July, 1839. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. Dude, that's like so strange. Oh my god. Yes, it is quite strange. Oh, and also I should probably turn on the light. I don't even know if... Eh, well, there's that light. I guess we didn't need it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We've got a ton of tinder boxes. I think we're fine on that front. But yeah, okay, so that's a little bit confusing there. Um, not sure where we're going to find the third rod. Maybe we don't actually need the third rod. Maybe maybe the third rod, maybe that whole note about the third rod was just like a misleading thing to get us to go to the uh, study room, which we might otherwise not have thought to go to. That's highly possible. Um... But anyway, uh, for now, that's all the time I have, so I'm going to have to end it here. I hope you all have enjoyed this. I hope you all continue to enjoy it. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.